Welcome everyone to ME Videocast. Today we're talking with Doug Barron about his work with colleagues on a meta-analysis of transmitter effects on avian behavior and ecology. Hi Doug, how are you? I'm doing just fine, how are you doing? <laughs> fine, thanks. So Doug, what is the main idea behind your work? Well, for those people that aren't familiar with radio transmitters, they're small electronic devices that um, emit a radio signal that can be detected through various means. And what this means is that when they're attached to wildlife, um, these signals can allow researchers to not only locate the individuals, but also to collect a wide variety of information from them, uh, ranging from their physiology to their acoustics and even to their activity levels. And this really makes them a useful tool for investigating questions from a wide variety of fields, from wildlife management to animal behavior and even to physiological ecology. And for this reason, transmitters are currently being used by researchers to study members of essentially every vertebrate taxa. And so despite this obvious utility that's provided by radio transmitters, um, by placing them on animals, researchers could potentially be burdening the animals in such a way that either negatively impacts the animals themselves or that creates a bias in the data that are collected from these individuals. And so we decided to perform this study after looking into the literature um, of how birds are affected by radio transmitters and realizing that there's just a huge number of studies out there on this topic. And although these studies have been compiled to some extent, in several nice literature reviews, the results of these reviews are generally qualitative and no one had actually done a formal quantitative review. And so we set out to fill this knowledge gap um, by combining the results of 84 different studies into a meta-analysis with five primary goals that we were trying to, uh, trying to address. Uh, the first question that we were looking at is obviously, are birds negatively impacted by radio transmitters? And if so, have these effects uh, decreased over time due to either methodological or technological advancements. And then secondly, if the birds are found to be affected, what aspects of their behavior or ecology are affected? And then also what attributes of the birds influence the degree to which they're affected by the radio transmitters? And what aspects of the transmitters themselves influence the uh, impact of their effects? And then finally, um, are these effects that we're seeing uh, partially a consequence of the capture and restraint that's necessary to place the radio transmitters on the birds? Oh, excellent. And how do you think this work advances uh, methodology in ecology and evolution? Well, the advancement provided by this study really comes from, um, from the inference that we can get by combining the results of numerous studies across a wide variety of different species and transmitter types. Um, is this really allowed us to look for broader patterns than has been previously possible? And what we found was that, yes, indeed, radio transmitters are negatively impacting birds, both for uh, both overall and for eight of the 12 specific aspects that we analyzed. Um, however, the magnitude of these effects is relatively small uh, for most of the aspects that we looked at. Um, however, the most substantial impacts that we found were that birds with transmitters have markedly increased energy expenditure and are much less likely to nest. Uh, these effects were uh, relatively, or these effects were independent of characteristics of the birds being their age, their sex, their method of locomotion, and their body mass. And we also found no evidence that proportionally heavier transmitters have greater effects. Uh, however, we did find that the frequency of both device-induced mortality and the frequency of device-induced behaviors, such as printing, uh, did uh, differ among the different methods of attaching the transmitters. And finally, we found that other than an effect on the frequency of foraging behaviors, uh, capture and restraint actually has no substantial impacts on, uh, on the effects that we were seeing. Oh, wow. So basically, uh, bigger birds were affected as small birds. Exactly. Large birds and small birds, um, swimming birds, flying birds. Um, the, uh, the, it really seemed that the characteristics of the birds themselves were relatively unimportant in shaping these effects. Mm. And so how do you think this method could be applied and by, by whom? I mean, the findings of your work. Well, sure. So we really think that our findings should be relatively generalizable to other taxa and particularly other small volant animals such as bats. And we're really therefore hoping that our findings will be useful to pretty much anybody that's considering using radio transmitters or other similar devices such as uh, data loggers on wildlife. And there's several kind of main take home uh, points that we hope that the readers get out of this study. And first, um, Although it does appear that radio transmitters do impact the birds that are carrying them, the uh, most of the aspects that we looked at are, are affected to a relatively small degree. 
Um, with that said, however, researchers do need to be particularly careful to employ appropriate controls if their research questions relate to either energetic expenditure or nesting propensity, as these were affected to a much greater degree. Um, furthermore, researchers should carefully weigh the costs and benefits of placing transmitters on either sensitive or rare species, uh, for which a slight demographic effect could be really important. Um, and then secondly, although the characteristics of the bird seemed relatively unimportant, the method used to attach the transmitters was very important in shaping these effects. And we found that both nest success and device-induced behaviors differed among attachment types. And although the method of attachment type did not influence the frequency of nest abandonment or physical harm from the transmitter, it did, um, uh, certain attachment methods were more likely to lead to mortality. And in particular, both anchored and implanted transmitters had the highest device-induced mortality rates, followed closely by harness and collar attached transmitters. And although glue and tail mount transmitters had the lowest reported frequency, uh, these methods frequently have relatively low retention rates, which can really minimize their uh, value for addressing a number of different questions. Um, so, and then probably the most important finding that really comes out of this regarding uh, the transmitter characteristics is that, um, is that we did actually not find uh, that tr larger transmitters have a greater effect. And this really contrasts the common 3% uh, or 5% rule that's used by both researchers and permitting agencies. And, and what this rule really states is that devices weighing less than these given proportions, once again, either 3% or 5% of the animal's body mass, uh, should have negligible effects. And so while we're still supportive of taking all possible measures to decrease the relative weight of, of the transmitters, whenever this is possible, um, this result really does suggest that for justified purposes, increasing the transmitter size beyond these values may really not be detrimental to the study animals. And so in conclusion, because we didn't really find much of an impact of capture and restraint, researchers should really consider using traditional mark recapture techniques um, to address the subset of questions uh, that these can effectively address. Uh, however, there's a huge number of questions that can really only be investigated well using devices such as radio transmitters. And we therefore hope that ecologists that are going that route will use the results from this study to balance the benefits of the data that they're acquiring using those methods uh, against the potential harm both to the birds and also due to biases in the data that we've identified in this study. Thank you, Doug. I think your study will be very, very useful to any kind of wildlife practitioner, really. Thanks. Well, thank you so much, Graciela.